Hi everyone, welcome to my HRC Doctoral Fellowship talk entitled Music to Your Ears, Words to Mind. My name is Ray T. Chu. I'm an Applied Linguistics student in the Departments of Education and Language and Linguistic Science. In today's talk, I hope to bring you into my world of studying children learning languages and uncovering how children listen to the weird and wonderful sounds and words around them and learn how to say them. You will notice that I talk about children learning languages, yet there is music in my title. Let's first think a bit more about music in languages. There is actually music in the way we speak, just we may not necessarily think of it in the same way we associate music with perhaps Beyonce or Beethoven. Now that's a collab I want to watch. For example, we have intonation in our speech, which refers to how expressive we sound when we speak. Do we speak in an undulating manner, having highs and lows, like when speaking with young children? We tend to go, wow, is that a ball? That's a beautiful ball. So very expressive, bit exaggerated. Or are we monotonous and deadpan and if I spoke like this the entire presentation, all of you will fall asleep? We can also think of it in terms of amplitude. Are we loud or soft? I'm sure I don't need to elaborate on that. We can also have tone. The thing is, for the first two elements, if we vary intonation or amplitude, it doesn't make a difference in meaning. So for the word apple, I can say it as apple, 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 apple. You will all think I'm a bit strange for saying it in those ways, but you will nonetheless know I'm referring to the red or green delicious fruit or the brand of electronics. But for tone, tone makes a difference in meaning. What then is tone? Let me give you some examples. Ma, 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 ma. To many of you, perhaps what I just said sounds like the word ma in a sing-song voice. But to the Mandarin speakers among you, you will know I said the words mother, hemp, horse, and scold. They were all different words, not just music. This musical element is known in linguistics and tone. Tone plays an important part in differentiating between words. Depending on the tone you say a word in, you mean completely different things, which, as you can imagine, can make for some great puns and jokes. For instance, in Mandarin, 我要睡觉 means I want to sleep. Same syllables with different tones, 我要睡觉 means I want dumplings. When we first learn words as children, for many languages, including Indo-European ones, a word is made up of one or more syllables. So for this cute infant here, we call it baby, two syllables in English, three syllables bambina in Italian, and bacha, two syllables in Bengali. What about tone languages? As an aside, tone languages are actually the majority they make up 70% of languages in the world. As you can see from this map, many of them are clustered in Africa, including Fon, and Asia, including Thai and Mandarin. For tone languages, words are made up of syllables plus tone. So back to the Ma and Shui Jiao examples, mother and horse are both one syllable, one tone, dumplings and sleep, are two syllables with two tones. Again, remember the importance of tone. You really don't want to accidentally call your mother a horse or vice versa. So the question is, how did I, at age two, and other children exposed to Mandarin learn the language? Which part of the work caught our attention more? Is it the syllables or tone? To find out, I played a game with 20 bilingual two-year-olds and Mandarin in Singapore. The game was called Say the Nonsense Word You Hear, and I video recorded their responses. There are a few reasons for using made-up nonsense words. One, because it mimics real life. 
children are always hearing things or new words they've never heard of before and have to learn how to say them. Two, having non-words also means that everyone is on a level playing field. No child will be at an advantage because all of them don't know the words because the words do not exist. Three, having non-words also allows us to see what catches children's attention when they hear unfamiliar items long enough that they can then reproduce a semblance of whatever they have just heard. This way, I could also test which was easier to repeat. Easy or difficult syllables, easy or difficult tones, or a mix of the two. I measured the accuracy in terms of the parts they said correctly. Syllables in general, tones in general, and the four individual conditions as a result of the mixing. In general, tones will repeat them more accurately than syllables. Let's now turn to the four individual conditions. For these conditions, two of them included easy syllables with easy tones and difficult syllables with difficult tones. As expected, words which are easy on both counts will say the most accurately and difficult ones least accurately. So words like niā pe will say more accurately than fō suāng. What's interesting were the two mixed conditions in the middle. But before I proceed, I would like you, wherever you are watching this video from, to have a think and guess which of the two mixed conditions you think would show better performance. Would it be condition two, easy syllables with difficult tones, or condition three, difficult syllables with easy tones? You can pause the video here before I reveal the answer. If you guess condition three, you are right. The words in condition three were said more accurately than condition two, especially the tone element. The easy tone really grabbed the children's attention. I started by asking how children learn languages. Specifically, I looked at how children learn Mandarin words. As I've mentioned, Mandarin words are made up of syllables and tone. And it seems that tone is the attention-grabbing element of the word. The way children learn is amazing, isn't it? They can attune to the characteristics in the environment. In this case, musical or tone characteristics if they are important in the language. What's been studied has mostly been on non-tone Indo-European languages. My research provides additional insights into one of the most widely spoken musical or tone languages in the world, Mandarin, and perhaps can teach parents and teachers to think up fun ways to teach Mandarin to their children. Maybe they can incorporate fun games that have nonsense words with tones to let children practice saying unfamiliar words. Because if you think about it, every word we now know started out as a nonsense, unknown non-word to us at some point. It was after multiple exposures to the sound of the word, perhaps the item itself, and also practice with speaking the word, that we now know that the red or green delicious fruit is called an apple. The music in tone languages gives rise to meaning. It is more than just a melody. Thank you.